Hi guys, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name's Rick Harris. I've been doing animated light shows for about six years and I'm part of the FPP development team, mostly for doing testing, quality control, and documentation. In this video, I'm going to go over my experience with solder sleeves. I'm going to go over what is a solder sleeve. I'm going to go over what do you need to use solder sleeves. What the installation methods are. Then I'm going to do a video demo. Then I'm going to talk about the best way for connecting pixel wires. This video should provide you the basic information that you need to decide if you want to use solder sleeves in your show. So what is a solder sleeve? Solder sleeve is one method of connecting wires. There's a lot of different methods. There's butt connectors, crimp connectors, soldering, wire nuts, waggos, clickets, uh, Matos has one too. Um, there's all different methods that you use. So we're going to go over the solder sleeve. And the solder sleeve consists of the shrink tube, which is the entire tube here. It'll shrink when it heats up. Then you have the solder tube, which is this small section here in the middle that uh, has solder in it. When it heats up, it will uh, solder the wires together. And you have the waterproof seal, which is these red bands here. And these red bands are color coded typically to identify the wire size that they're to be used for. Red is the color for 18 to 22 gauge wire. And that's what we typically use in our hobby. So that's basically a solder sleeve in a nutshell. So what are you going to need to use solder seals to connect your wires? You're going to need the wires to connect, obviously. You're going to need the appropriate solder sleeve. You're going to need some sort of heat source. And a heat gun is recommended, but you can also use a torch or a lighter. Then helping hands is optional, but it really makes your job a lot easier if you have something to hold the wires together. Um, to, in that way, you could solder it and they don't move a whole lot. And possibly some shrink tubing, and that's optional. When I'm connecting wires that are in the middle of a prop, I'll just use the solder sleeves. But if I'm connecting the pixels to like a pigtail end that's going to get a lot of movement and bending and stuff like that, I'll add some marine grade shrink tubing, uh, typically a three to one. It'll shrink three times its original size. And it also has a, like a glue type a thing inside and it really makes it a little bit sturdier and that's just just for me for stability purposes to give it a little more reinforcement but you don't need to so the installation methods how do you install solder steel tubes well you're going to strip the wires then you're going to insert the wires into the sleeve with an overlap then you're going to apply the appropriate heat then you're going to let it cool and you're done that's it. So let's go into a little more detail on that. So you're going to strip the wires. Strip the wires. You're typically going to strip about a quarter inch, which is about six millimeters. Um, and you want both of them to be stripped about the same. You don't want them to go too far, too far back because then they'll be outside that waterproof connection. You just basically want enough for them to overlap and to be underneath that solder tube that you see. Then you're going to insert them with an overlap. You can see here that they're inserted into the tube with the overlap. Now I have the sleeve off to the side. That's not how you're going to want to do it, but I want you to see how they overlap, how they're up next to each other and they go almost all the way to the insulation on the opposite side. But how you really do it is after you have that overlap, then slide the solder seal over so that it lines up in the middle like that. So you see that it's on the center. You could see wire on the left and right hand side of that solder tube. So that way you're pretty sure that you're going to have a good connection because it's on both sides. Now we're going to talk about applying the heat. There's three common methods of heating solder sleeves. First one is a heat gun. And I think heat gun is by far the best method, but I did run into a problem with the heat gun at first. I had an older heat gun that was very well used. It was about 20, 25 years old. It was one that I'd used for applying monocoat to radio control airplanes. And it really didn't have a heat setting. It had a dial on it that controlled how much air was flowing through it. And if you turned down the amount of air that was going through it, it got made it hotter. And if you opened it up, it made it cooler. But there's really no way of telling how hot it really was. So it's kind of like a trial and error. 
But after I had used it for a couple hundred solder sleeves, it would melt the solder, but it really wouldn't flow. I could see it melt and kind of pool up inside. So I assumed that it was good enough. And it worked for a while. It didn't fail right away. But after a while, I did get only, I've only had one fail so far. And it was that one. And all I did is I applied heat with an appropriate heat gun and it worked. But after that, I decided I only wanted to do it one time. So I bought a good heat gun with temperature settings and it also had a heat deflector to kind of direct the heat away from where it was because I have melted a table that I was using. So you don't want to point directly down on a, a table that might melt. And it costs about $65, but it's well worth it. I've used it for a lot of other things as well besides just solder sleeves. So it, it was a good investment for me. You can adjust the temperatures and you know exactly what the heat is that you're getting. You could use a torch. When I had an issue with the solder sleeves not melting properly with the first heat gun, I tried using a torch, but I yeah, I had problems with it applying too cool a heat. I'd try farther away, closer, and every once in a while I'd melt, melt a hole in the solder sleeve, and I didn't like the idea of that coming out. Now, I don't know if it would melt back together or not, but I just didn't like the idea. A lot of people have good luck with it. I just did not have good luck with it. And there's a lot of people that have used a lighter. I never tried it. I was just happy with the heat gun, so that's what I stuck with. And you see here, if you look at the solder sleeves, a lot of them are going to have an indication of what the temperature is. And the, the minimum temperature you see down here, it says 138 degrees, which is, I think is 280 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you, obviously, you don't want to set it right at that temperature because... Um, it's going to take it forever to get up to that temperature and melt. So you want to set it significantly higher than that. Um, but that kind of gives you an idea where to start at. And here you can see what the solder has flowed through. You see here on both sides of the sleeve, you can see how it totally fills in that void over there. Now, sometimes you won't get it to totally fill that void, just depending on how much solder it is. But you really want it to get a, a good, complete flow. You don't want it to just be balled up underneath that uh, original sleeve that's there. You want to see a nice, good flow. If you see a nice, good flow, you should be golden. Then let it cool. You want to let it cool for about probably 30, 40 seconds. Um, when solder's hot and you move the wires, you could actually break the joint and be have a cold joint. So you don't want to do that. So let it sit and cool for uh, probably, you know, 30, 40 seconds. I usually will move on to something that, you know, assemble the next part. And by that time, it's plenty cool. So I've got a video demo. I'm going to record a video and show you kind of the process that I use. And when I'm done with that, We'll get back. So here's the items that you need to connect strings together. Uh, I'd like to use the solder sleeves. They work really well. As you see, this is a container of 400, and this is probably my third or fourth container. So I've used a lot of these solder sleeves, you know, in excess of probably a thousand. Um, the solder sleeves, at least for me and my experience, work very well. And I've only had one failure that was actually user error. So in order to use the solder sleeves, um, you need a heat gun. Some people use a torch or a lighter or, or other aspect like that. And those will work. They do have a nice attachment to try and concentrate the heat so that it doesn't uh, go all over the place and heat down below when you're doing it. Make sure you're careful. This is a, a wood table so it doesn't burn. Um, if you have something below, you might want to put some sort of protection so that you don't um, melt what's below it because they do get quite hot. When I'm connecting pixels together, like inside a prop, I'll use just the solder sleeves. There's not a whole lot of movement going on, but just me for peace of mind, if I'm hooking up like, uh, for example, a pigtail to the end of the string, I'll put uh, a shrink tubing on it just for a little extra stability. I like using the three in one shrink Marine. It shrinks three times the size. So it gives you a wider range of um, thing, wire sizes that it could go on. It's also thicker material and inside it has kind of like a glue for additional waterproofing. 
Uh, I've never had a problem with water ingress in on the props that I'm using just these. And like I said, I've used a lot of them. But for the areas that might get a lot of flexing, like pigtails on or um, putting a pigtail on an extension cord or a pigtail on the end or beginning of a prop where it's going to get a, a lot of movement. You're hooking it up, disconnecting it year after year. I like to put a little bit extra stability on it. Um, wire strippers. I like using these wire strippers to do all three wires at once and it gives it a nice even feel. And that's basically all that you need to get it done. You can buy the heat shrink in a kit um, or in bulk. I actually buy it in bulk because I, I use a fair amount of it. Um, and I actually end up buying a big roll of it just because I do so much. But that's all you need. So let's get into the actual splicing of the wires. So the first thing we're going to do is strip the wires. And it's good to have both the pigtails and the pixels or both sides that you're connecting to have the strip length the same so that when the wires overlap they have the same overlap that way they're not hitting into it and that's where something like this comes in place it's got a little stop so you can do it consistently so i'm going to strip the wire and that's more than enough there and i like to separate it enough to be able to get them in and I'll twist these wires together so that I don't have any frayed ends it makes it a little bit easier getting it into the solder sleeve okay and then I want to strip this as well so if you notice the strip on that is real small compared to this and you won't get a whole lot of overlap so let's strip this Now you see the overlap is about the same. It makes it a little bit easier when you're lining it up. Okay, so now we have this stripped, but I don't remember what side I'm working on. So I want to look in, what side is this? This side does not have the marking, and this says data in. So this is the data coming in, so that means this will be the female side. Because remember I said the male side typically goes to the data in. So these helping hands really help. So I'll put this on. I'll grab three of these solder sleeves. Now the solder sleeves have one side that's slightly bigger than the other. I'm not quite sure the reason for that, but I think it's so you could put like two wires in the one side. I always start with the smaller side on the one that I put in here because that's what I have more room to work with. So I'll put it in and I'll put that solder sleeve over or the solder joint right over the wire. Now, let me go over and explain how this is. So you have these two bands here are what actually goes in and tight uh, when it heats up shrinks really tight onto the wire provides the waterproofing and then this here will shrink as well this here is your solder and when it gets hot enough it'll melt and like i said the first time i did it i just waited till this just kind of shrunk down and i thought it was good but this has to be will shrink down and you'll see the solder flow sometimes left sometimes right sometimes both sides depending on where the heat is um, and it's real important that you get the right size of these for the wire for everything that we're doing is pretty much going to be the red ones so the wires i split just enough to be able to get these onto the wires And this is going to be the female pigtail. So, and like I said, on the pigtails, I like to use the shrink tubing to cover it, just to give it a little more stability. And I have on occasion forgot to put this on, and when I do that, I don't worry about it. 
and put it on the wire that has the longest side because if you get the heat on this, it'll start shrinking up and tighten down on the wires. So I'll put it down, leave myself some room. Then I'll put this here. And then with this, I make sure that, because remember I said they were wired standard, so I could just line up the dash line with the dash line. And the dash line here is right there. So it'll just be a straight shot just to wire it in like that. These here, I want to twist together. And then if you take these and kind of stagger them a little bit, so the one sticks out a little bit farther than the other, it makes it a little bit easier once you get one in, then the next one. Once you get all three in, then you can just push them together. And the wires might hit the, the ceiling band or that, and you might have to just finagle a little bit. And then get it in to where the wires overlap evenly. And this is hitting right here, so it's not going in, so i got to move that. And sometimes if you twist these, you can turn and move it. So once you get them lined up to where... I'm going to move this to the side. Once you get them lined up to where the wire is overlapping the exact amount, so that they're both at the same, then move that solder portion right over the center of those wires. And then I always like to verify, double check that it's on the center, that I'm not over the insulation or anything. And once you get that all centered up, then you can go ahead and heat it. So I'm going to go ahead and heat this up and I hope you could see it shrinking. If you look, you can see the solder oozed out on this side and that side. And here you can see that the solder oozed out here and here. So the solder actually melted. The first one that I did that failed, um, it just kind of went in and it looked like it closed. But no, if you just make sure that it's sealed, you can see that it's sealed on both sides. So that's basically the extent of putting it together. Okay. I hope you enjoyed the video. So I'm going to go over the best way. So there is a way, not the way. I have used over 2,000 of these sleeves, and I've only had the one failure, like I said, and that was user error, not because the sleeve itself. I did not heat it up till it flowed properly. If you look here at my purchase seals, there's 400, 400, 200, 400, 220, 150, 150, and a whole nother page. So you see, I bought quite a few of them and used quite a few. So the best way is what works for you. There are a lot of people out there that swear solder sleeves are not good, just like there's others that says that crimp connectors are the best way. In this hobby, there's usually several ways to achieve a goal. And they all work. And they all give you the same results. Find a way that works for you. And that is the best way. Is the solder sleeve the best way? That depends. It is for me. Might not be for you. But I've found that it's been quite reliable. And I've used quite a few of them with great success. So you decide what's best for you and go from there. I'm just here to provide you the information. I hope this video was helpful. Have fun and see you around.